Next, let us solve an example considering the lead in eutectic system. Let us assume that we are solidifying a composition C0 and we want to find out the C0 given the fact that 90 percent of the volume fraction of the solid consisted of the eutectic mixture and about 10 percent of the volume fraction the pro eutectic beta phase. The given fact that the, uh, the phase is a pro eutectic beta phase, we can clearly see that the composition C0 has to the lie to the right of the eutectic composition which is 62 percent of tin. Um, let us make this and certain other observations that lead is heavier than tin and hence the density of alpha is more than that of the beta phase, the two terminal solid solutions. Since the pro eutectic phase is beta, the composition which we want to find out is on the hyper eutectic side. The volume fractions in of course, volume percent are usually calculated taking into account the area fractions doing a metallography or a microstructure analysis then converting these volume fractions, uh, these area fractions you calculate into volume fractions. In other words, first I would do a metallographic study and say suppose I have a microstructure in which I have a two phase mixture in which there is one phase which is the shaded phase and the other phase say for instance this is the my alpha phase and this is the beta phase. I can make an assumption that these area fractions are equal to the volume fractions and from these volume fractions I can further calculate the weight fractions. Now, uh, the density data given for uh, beta and alpha are the density of alpha is 10300 kilogram per meter cube, uh, beta is 7300 kilogram per meter cube and we know that the eutectic composition uh, is 62 percent of tin and the eutectic reaction takes place at 183 degrees Celsius. Uh, the liquid of course, is 62 percent tin, the alpha is 18 percent tin and the beta is 97 percent in which are these two compositions in the diagram. Now, we are interested in finding um, <coughs> what we call the C0. Now, how would such a microstructure of course, look we already had a look at that. Suppose, I am solidifying uh, I would first have some pro eutectic phase and in this diagram of course, instead of alpha the pro eutectic phase is beta and then of course, I have an eutectic mixture which surrounds it and the fraction of this pro eutectic phase is 10 percent as given in the question we are trying to solve. Using the fact that there is 10 percent volume percent of the beta phase, the weight for a fraction of the pro eutectic beta is the weight of the beta divided by the weight of the alloy. So, we convert uh, the percentages which is 10 percent of volume percent of the beta phase which is the pro eutectic beta phase into fractions in 0.1. The density of uh, this um, beta phase is 7300 then further I divide <coughs> this by the weight of the alloy which consists of the pro eutectic beta phase and an eutectic mixture. <laughs> so, I for now do not know the density of the pro eutectic mixture and I multiply this by 0 0.9 into eutectic rho of the eutectic mixture. Therefore, I have to now calculate the rho eutectic mixture which we know from the lever rule and now I am talking about points D and E we take into account D and F and E being of course, the eutectic in between. I use these percentages which is 97 percent of uh, tin in the beta phase, 62 percent is the eutectic composition and 97 minus 18 is of course, the whole length of the lever plus 7300 is the density of the beta phase, 62 minus 18 which is this number, this length of the arm of the lever divided by 97 minus 18 which is equal to the full length of the lever, this is equal to D f. Therefore, I can calculate the density of the eutectic mixture to be 8629 kilogram per meter cube. Now, since I have the density of the eutectic mixture, I can now substitute it back into this equation 1 here and therefore, I can get the fraction of the pro eutectic beta which is what I am trying to calculate here to be 0.086 this is the weight fraction of the pro eutectic beta phase and that means, I have converted now my volume fraction or volume percentage into 0.86 weight percent. Now, I can use the lever rule again assuming of course, the fulcrum of the lever to be at the mean composition C 0 here. So, this is now a new lever, this is my fulcrum for the new lever here 
and my now arm of the lever, the lever extends from point E to point F and this is my new fulcrum F prime. Therefore, I can use a lever rule to calculate 0.086 is equal to C 0 minus 0 0.62, which is the smaller arm of the lever divided by 0 0.97 minus 0 0.62, which is the entire length of the lever starting from E to F. So, therefore, I can write down that this numerator is the smaller arm of the lever E F prime and this is the larger arm of the lever the denominator which is nothing but E F. From this I can calculate the mean composition C 0 because that is to be 65 percent. Therefore, it is just to the right of C 0 is just to the right of the point E and therefore, this is the point corresponding to F prime. Otherwise, this is the composition C 0. Therefore, repeatedly applying the lever rule and using some simple definitions like uh, <coughs> uh, the fact that uh, uh, the density mass per unit volume is density and that the data which we I get from metallography is actually volume percent and I need to convert it to weight percent before I can use the lever rule because the phase diagram all the quantities are given in weight percent and therefore, using the simple uh, formula of conversion I can now calculate the mean composition looking at my metallographic data. So, this kind of a procedure is routinely applied to now know what is the composition if I know my fractions or of course, if you know the comp fractions using the phase diagram I can in conversely calculate the fraction of the pro eutectic phase and the eutectic mixture. Let us move to a different type of a phase diagram next which is known as the peritectic phase diagram. Um, like the eutectic system the peritectic reaction is found in systems complete liquid solubility, but limited solid solubility and typically for those uh, elements whose melting point have uh, is very very different. In the peritectic reaction the liquid reacts with one solid alpha to produce another solid beta. So, of course, crudely I can write down this peritectic reaction to be liquid plus alpha giving rise to beta. Since the solid beta forms at the interface between liquid and alpha further reaction is dependent on solid state diffusion needless to say this becomes a rate limiting step and hence it is difficult to equilibrate peritectic reactions. Because when you are drawing phase uh, diagrams we want to be as close to equilibrium as possible this is easy to achieve in the case of eutectic systems, but because of the involvement of solid state diffusion it becomes difficult in the peritectic reaction. Now, let us try to understand this using the schematic here below that I have a liquid and I have an alpha here. This liquid reacts with this alpha to produce the interfacial reaction product which is beta here. Now, since beta is a solid phase if further reaction has to take place uh, and this beta actually separates in three dimensions the alpha and the liquid that means there is no contact between alpha and liquid and this implies there has to be some diffusion involved. And this solid state diffusion becomes a rate limiting step and therefore, if I am studying a peritectic um, system I have to give sufficient time. So, that I attain equilibrium and we will be considering at least couple of peritectic kind of a systems. Uh, one of them which is we will consider in the next page is the lead uh, platinum silver system and in this case the pure beta phase is not stable below the peritectic temperature. And uh, we will of course, describe this more when we come to the next slide and this peritectic temperature happens to be about 1186 degrees Celsius and therefore, just below the peritectic temperature the beta phase splits into a mixture of alpha plus beta. So, this is point noteworthy that even though I am having liquid plus alpha giving beta the beta immediately splits below the eutectic temperature into alpha plus beta, but still I cannot write this reaction as liquid plus alpha giving alpha plus beta I should write this reaction as liquid plus alpha giving beta. So, let us take this example of the platinum silver peritectic silver system and I note that the melting point of platinum is 1772 which is much above silver which is 961 degree Celsius. In the peritectic reaction of course, I have the uh, horizontal line which is take, uh, the temperature at which the peritectic reaction takes place and this is 1186 degree Celsius the T peritectic. At the two ends of this red line the tie line or the sorry this red line where there is a three phase equilibria you have the alpha phase 
and the liquid phase, this alpha reacts with this liquid to produce beta phase at this point. So, this is where the beta phase is produced, this is the composition of the beta, which happens to be 42.4 percent of silver. So, liquid with 63, 66 percent of silver reacts with alpha with 10.5 uh, percent of silver to give the beta phase with 42 percent of silver at a temperature of 1186. But as evident from the phase diagram, just below this temperature T peritectic 1186 degree Celsius, you see the actually the phase field which I am going to highlight now. This phase field is an alpha plus beta phase field. So, just if suppose I am talking about a temperature just below the peritectic temperature, what is stable is an alpha plus beta mixture and not just the pure beta which was produced during the peritectic reaction. And therefore, if I were to slowly cool the system, I would find that even for a peritectic composition which is 42.4 percent of silver, I would note that just as I am cooling below the 1186 degree Celsius, I would get an alpha plus beta mixture though this is not the original product of the peritectic reaction. So, we can see that this is an example of a peritectic system, this is a new kind of a reaction wherein one liquid with a solid produces an interfacial beta which is the peritectic system and all the single phase fields in this diagram have been marked in different colors the liquid phase above the alpha phase and the beta phase like we did for the eutectic system I can also consider now for instance slow cooling of various compositions and try to figure out what will be the resulting product. <coughs> but we will skip that for now and we will try to understand how we can think of the peritectic system evolving from an isomorphous system. We did this for the eutectic system some time back in which case we consider an isomorphous system a typical double lens kind of a system here and we said that there is a variation to this wherein I have a depression in the freezing point and I al which also implies a phase separation at low temperatures and then I considered <coughs> the eutectic system as a limiting case of this kind of a what you might call a depression in freezing point fall uh, with an phase separation system. Now, similarly for the peritectic I can again visualize the double lens uh, isomorphous system, but now with the melting points of A and B very very different. So, I can see that this is the melting point of A, this is the melting point of A and there is a melting point of B and they are vastly different. Now, uh, as I again pointed out it is a, this is not a single phase diagram many of these systems may actually not be present, but uh, we can uh, you know think visualize this in terms of a mental construct. So, from this system simple system I can think of a phase separation system and the two phase field being here at low temperatures, then I can think of a limiting possibility where the two phase mixture uh, uh, dome actually touches my isomorphous double lens and finally, I can think of a limiting case where I have an peritectic system. So, this is my peritectic system. So, this was my original the dotted line shows the original double lens construction and here is my the two phases which originally came out the alpha 1 plus alpha 2 phases which were present here as a continuous solid solution, but now they have been separated <coughs> by this two phase field okay. and there is no region where I can go continuously from the alpha 1 to the alpha 2 phase which is in fact the alpha phase which at high temperatures. So, thus I can visualize um, a series of constructs to go from the isomorphous system to the peritectic system. Um, we are not talking in detail about many more of those phase diagrams we talked about like for instance syntactic system or the monotectic system, but we will consider some important examples of phase diagrams and the most important of these of course, we will talk about is what is known as the iron carbon diagram or truly speaking the iron cementite phase diagram. In this context of course, I had pointed out cementite is actually a metastable phase and if left sufficiently long enough you would expect that the iron the cementite would break into iron and carbide, but we shall uh, tolerate cementite part of the phase diagram and we will consider the what you might call the iron rich side of the iron carbon phase diagram which is technologically very very important. Now, another technologically important phase diagram is the aluminum copper system, 
which we shall consider in the next chapter when we talk about phase transformations. And in this aluminum copper system, we are especially interested in the aluminum rich end of the phase diagram. And this um, is aluminum copper system is not only technologically important, but is a rich system from understanding perspective of physical metallurgy and the various processes uh, which take place when I try to engineer my alloy in the aluminum copper system with typically within 4 percent copper content. So, let us now go on to the iron cementite phase diagram, which is a very very important uh, phase diagram and this uh, of course, is technologically important, but many of the aspects we have been talking about phase diagrams will become clear when I use this as an illustrative example. And this iron cementite the carbon uh, percentage corresponding to cementite is 6.67 weight percent of course, in atomic percent carbon is just one fourth one fourth of course, means it is 25 percent, but in weight percent carbon being a light element is only 6.67 percent. As I pointed out cementite is not an equilibrium phase and would tend to decompose into iron and graphite, but this reaction is very sluggish and for all practical purposes at the microstructural level I can think of cementite to be a part of the phase diagram. Now, cementite uh, when you are cooling from the melt cementite readily forms as it nucleus readily as compared to graphite and therefore, the phase which forms typically when I cool is the cementite phase. Uh, typically of course, this is not a hard and fast rule uh, the compositions with low carbon are called steels and those with high carbon are called cast ions. Of course, uh, in reality the castability is the true criteria for uh, the classification of uh, steels and cast ions and not the carbon content. The important point of course, which we will come to in lot of detail in the next chapter is the fact that heat treatments can be done to alter the properties of steel by modifying the microstructure. In other words, I can carry out microstructure engineering and we will do a lot of this microstructure engineering in the chapter on phase transformations and try to understand how we can alter the properties given a fixed composition. That means, if somebody comes and asks me what is the yield strength of uh, 0.8 percent carbon steel, uh, there is no such number it depends on the microstructure, it depends on the processing route and therefore, yield strength being a microstructure sensitive property, it would depend on my uh, processing and the microstructure. And we will also consider uh, later on when we talk about phase transformation metastable phases like modern site, which are not part of the phase diagram and therefore, we will not be considering it in this chapter. And as before, we will be using what we call slow cooling curves to see how certain microstructures are produced. And um, the part of the in phase diagram ion is which we are interested is the one with less than 2 percent carbon and at a temperature less than about 1100 degrees Celsius. The important phases which we will consider in the iron cementite phase diagram is the austenite phase gamma, which is a cubic close pack structure. It is interstitial solid solution of carbon in iron and we already noted that the carbon goes into the octahedral void. The second one is a ferrite which is a terminal solid solution and this is the room temperature structure of iron the BCC again the carbon going into the smaller octahedral void and of course, an intermediate compound Fe 3 C cementite which is an orthorhombic phase that means, it has got lower symmetry and typically the cementite is very brittle. Now, let us focus on the iron cementite diagram keeping our focus on the part of the phase diagram which is what you may call the iron rich side and extending up to about 6.67 percent of carbon which corresponds to the compound Fe 3 C of course, which is of course, an interstitial compound. If you look at this phase diagram there are three important reactions we need to note at high temperatures is what we call the peritectic reaction and we will try to understand the difference between this peritectic reaction and the one we considered before for the platinum silver system. At a lower temperature of 1147 degrees Celsius, we have the eutectic reaction and at even lower temperature the 723 degrees Celsius, we have the eutectoid reactions. And as I pointed out uh, when I consider the overview of his diagrams, I told you that the eutectoid reaction is a solid state analog of the eutectic reaction. In the eutectic reaction, we have a liquid which gives rise to gamma and Fe 3 C two solid products, but in the eutectoid reaction starting phase itself is a solid the gamma phase and it gives two products the alpha and Fe 3 C on the eutectoid reaction. 
this eutectoid reaction and the 723 degrees Celsius are important is the truly important part of the phase diagram. That means, if I want to delineate the important part of the phase diagram, I can think of it extending in this box. So, the important part of the phase diagram is the one uh, which is close to 723 degrees Celsius and above and wherein the eutectoid reaction takes place. Now, so as I, as I pointed out the three important reactions at high temperatures it at 1493 degrees Celsius we have the peritectic reaction wherein the delta phase reacts with the liquid phase to give the gamma phase. We have already noted that the gamma phase is the FCC structure. The delta phase akin to the alpha phase is a BCC structure. So, therefore, the two BCC structures the low temperature one which is a BCC and the high temperature one which is a BCC. And this is something which I had pointed out when we consider the uh, iron unary phase diagram that normally the room temperature structure of most cases or the low temperature structure is the close pack structure and as you heat you have the open structure. In the case of iron uh, there is a contribution to the energy the Gibbs free energy from the magnetic contribution and therefore, you expect it is happens that the beast you have at room temperature an open structure, but then after that it transforms to a the gamma phase which is a close pack structure and but at even higher temperatures it again forms an open structure. So, therefore, gamma to delta transformation is what you commonly expect what you do not expect is the existence of a BCC phase at lower temperatures. So, in this peritectic reaction which is here um, you notice that unlike the case of the platinum silver system in this peritectic reaction uh, you note that even below the peritectic temperature the single phase beta which is a product of the peritectic reaction is stable. So, in this case of course, the beta is gamma because now it is the FCC structure and it is stable. To understand this let us go to the board. So, you have the temperature axis and this is of course, the percentage carbon axis and I have my peritectic system here. Now, this is my delta which is my BCC structure there is a liquid phase field here. So, this is liquid plus delta structure and here is my gamma phase field and if I now consider the two terminal points this is my peritectic temperature. So, the peritectic reaction is Of course, the formal way of writing these reactions we already seen before that we should use a double ended arrow and we should write the compositions etcetera, but for simplicity we will write it this way. And therefore, the composition of gamma which is produced is here, but even below this composition we note that the gamma phase is stable and continues to be stable. So, unlike the case of the platinum silver system where the uh, beta phase was not stable below the peritectic temperature in this case even if you go down below the peritectic temperature the gamma phase is stable and continues to be stable till you encounter the eutectoid reaction where the gamma phase transforms. So, this is my peritectic reaction which occurs at high temperatures in the iron cementite phase diagram. Coming back to the slides therefore, this is my high temperature peritectic reaction which produces the gamma phase and <coughs> this gamma phase field is the one which is I am going to shade now. So, at high temperature I have got the gamma phase and at lower temperatures this gamma phase transforms by the eutectoid reaction into the alpha and Fe 3 phases. The important point to note of course, is that the alpha phase has very low solubility of carbon in it unlike the gamma phase which can dissolve up to 2 percent carbon at a temperature of about 1147 degrees Celsius. And this solubility of carbon in BCC iron keeps falling. So, it is maximum at the eutectoid temperature of 723 degrees Celsius of about 0.025 percent and it keeps falling till it reaches at room temperature of 0.08 percent. That means, the solubility of carbon in alpha ion the BCC form of ion is extremely small at room temperature. Therefore, most of the carbon <coughs> is present in the form of cementite when you slowly cool a eutectoid composition which is at 0.8 percent carbon. 
this eutectoid composition is to be noted because repeatedly we will encounter this composition the eutectoid composition which is 0.8 percent carbon. The eutectic reaction occurring at high temperature which produces a combination of uh, gamma and cementite is not technologically that important, but it is we have to note that suppose I were cooling a, uh, an alloy with 4.3 percent carbon then this 4.3 percent carbon alloy will produce a mixture of 2.06 percent carbon and 6.67 percent carbon uh, <coughs> cementite. So, this is this will be the terminal compositions. So, my gamma will have 2.06 percent my cementite will be 6.67 percent if I am cooling a liquid of 4.3 percent carbon. We will future focus all our attentions on this dotted rectangle which I had marked before which is my low temperature <coughs> iron rich side of the phase diagram. So, this is the iron rich side of the phase diagram I have the gamma phase field above and this is my gamma phase field which I am shading now and by the eutectoid reaction the gamma produces the an alpha plus F A 3 C mixture. Now, <coughs> there are important things of course, to be as I point to be noted though alpha the B C C form is not that ductile as the gamma form which is more ductile still it even the alpha is much more ductile compared to the F E 3 C. And we will note important features that when you cool a eutectoid mixture even though F E 3 C is a, uh, what you might call um, a highly brittle phase in because the fact the morphology in which this F E 3 C comes out the overall alloy is not very brittle. So, these are some important things we will note. So, I have a eutectoid reaction in which 0.8 percent carbon steel gives a 0.02 percent carbon alpha and a 6.67 percent carbon F E 3 C. So, this is my uh, important about important point of the phase diagram where you have the eutectoid reaction. Now, let us consider that what would happen <coughs> if I take three compositions and slowly cool one composition which is a eutectic composition which has been marked as C 2. The second composition is a hypo eutectic composition hypo implying that the carbon content is lower than that for the eutectoid composition that means a composition something like 0.6 or 0.7 or 0.5 percent carbon and additionally we will consider the slow cooling of an hyper eutectic eutectoid composition the hyper eutectoid means carbon concentrate uh, percentage more than 0.8 it's like 1 percent or 1.1 percent of carbon. Now, what happens of course, at high temperature my starting point in for the slow cooling is the gamma phase field that means, I start with the gamma phase and I slowly cool along this C 2 curve. When I do so of course, I start with a polycrystalline gamma and these are of course, the grain boundaries of the polycrystalline gamma. Now, as I cool and as I cross my eutectoid temperature I would notice that actually a mixture of alpha and F E 3 C come out simultaneously. This is very very similar to the eutectic reaction where we had an alpha plus beta coming out from the liquid, but in this case you have an alpha plus F E 3 C coming out from the solid mixture and this produces a, a microstructure which looks something as shown here. Therefore, you have alternating lamellae of alpha and F E 3 C and in of course, the two dimensional section these would look like bands of alpha and F E 3 C. If you look at a scanning electron micrograph you would notice again the same thing that I have these two phase mixture which is now there are bands of alpha and there are bands of F E 3 C. Of course, if I look at a picture like this I would notice that the spacing between the alpha and F E 3 C that is the periodicity looks very different in different regions for instance the periodicity is very close here. If I go to a region like this the periodicity is even more and this here is even more and this is because of the fact that even though I have <coughs> an alpha and F E 3 C mixture for instance suppose I consider this to be the alpha and F E 3 C mixture and these are my lamellae of alpha and F E 3 C the lamellar microstructure. Suppose, I am making a metallographic section assuming that the lamellae are approximately of uh, constant spacing though they will never be equal and this lamellar spacing also depends on the cooling rate, but for now we will assume that this 
uh, periodicity or the um, lattice parameter of this kind of a alternating lamellae is constant. But suppose I am taking three sections, one section like this and one section like this and at another section at even higher steeper angle, then I would notice that that in the first case this will be my spacing, the second case my spacing would have increased, in the third case my spacing would have even further increased. So, often when you are trying to interpret uh, microstructures we have to be in careful that what we are seeing is a two dimensional section through a three dimensional microstructure and that implies that even though if I am starting off with a constant spacing uh, lamellae, I would observe different spacings in my microstructure. So, such a micro constituent is called perlite which consists of alternating lamella of alpha and Fe 3 C. The next chapter of course, when we talk about phase transformation we will see that how such a uh, uh, what you might call alternating lamellar microstructure arises, but for now we will uh, just observe that we obtain a microstructure which consists of a micro constituent which is named as perlite which consists of alternating lamella of alpha and Fe 3 C. Now, Suppose I choose and and this perlite unlike pure cementite has actually higher ductility and we will um, uh, be doing some tests in the next chapter to understand this, but the fact that now my brittle phase is interdispersed in the lamellar fashion between the semi ductile or some uh, much better ductility alpha phase, the ductility of the overall micro constituent increases and therefore, my ductility of the microstructure which is perlitic microstructure increases. Now, suppose I am cooling an hypo eutectoid composition C 1 and I am starting with an uniform phase field gamma, then I would again have my grain boundaries which are now my austenite grain boundaries present and when I slowly cool this first I cross my temperature here, wherein I start to precipitate my, so this is my alpha phase wherein I start to prestate my alpha phase the ferrite phase. Now, this ferrite phase like the pro eutectic phase we had this is the solid state analog of that therefore, this is the pro eutectoid alpha phase. So, I would precipitate my pro eutectoid alpha phase in this temperature regime starting from here to here. So, in this regime I would have my pro eutectoid alpha phase coming out and typically because as we shall note in the next chapter that this occurs this phase transformation occurs uh, by a process known as nucleation and specially by a process known as heterogeneous nucleation. In heterogeneous nucleation green boundaries and other uh, defects in the material act like uh, nucleation centers that means that the precipitation starts not somewhere typically it is not somewhere in austenite which could also occur of course, but typically preferentially occurs along these grain boundaries. Therefore, I have got all my phases forming along the grain boundaries and as I cool from say a temperature T 1 to a temperature T eutectoid, I would notice that more and more of this uh, pro eutectoid alpha will come out and slowly by the formation of these nuclei and their growth. I would notice that the grain boundary region, the prior austenite grain boundary region would practically be coated by these pro eutectoid alpha phase. So, let me draw that schematically now once more let us see the zoomed in picture. So, I have my prior austenite grain boundaries here okay. and first initially a small pro eutectoid alpha may form here and at a later instant of course, some more may form here and here and typically the structure of these would be something as a something like a double lens construction and at a later instance some more would precipitate out here by this time the previous ones would have grown a little bit. So, as you lower the temperature and as more and more of this pro eutectoid alpha comes out. So, this is my prior austenite phase gamma and this is my pro eutectoid alpha. Slowly what happens is that the grain boundary sort of gets coated with this
for the, I'm using a crude term coated. What it means is that the precipitation process takes place in such a way that I have most of this protected alpha coming out along the green boundaries, prior austenite green boundaries, and I would have a, a microstructure which looks something like this. Now coming back to the slides, this is the region which I had marked with these hashes. So I have all my pro protected alpha coming out along my uh, prior austenite green boundaries. Now, when I cross this temperature eutectic T eutectic, the remaining gamma would transform. Now, this remaining gamma, as we had noted before, would have traveled along this line and reached a composition, which is now my eutectoid composition, which I call CEU, CE. So, it would have reached a eutectoid composition or a composition similar to C2, and therefore, this composition is ready for the eutectoid transformation, and therefore, I would also obtain a two phase mixture of alpha and Fe 3 C, which would come out in the remaining part. That means, I would now have my pearlitic phase coming out here. So, the final microstructure would consist of the pro eutectoid alpha, which is now present as almost like a continuous layer along the prior austenite green boundaries. And a eutectoid mixture of alpha and Fe 3 C. Now, the important point of course, is that which we had noted before that even though I am starting off from a composition like C 1, which is an hypo eutectoid composition. The fact that now the first half alpha, which is coming out would be along this horizontal line and would be in equilibrium with this gamma. The alpha composition will travel along this line. The gamma composition will travel along this line. Maybe the diagram is getting crowded, so I will draw it here. So, I am solidifying a composition which is C1, which is off eutectoid. I would note that the first alpha which comes out would be here, and the alpha composition would travel along this line, and the eutectoid composition would travel along this line and that means, when I am at the eutectoid temperature T eutectoid, I would notice that the composition is actually C eutectoid and this composition will undergo the eutectoid transformation. This we have noted for the case previously for the eutectic transformation. Now, corresponding to this, I could also consider a composition which is hyper eutectoid, which is like a composition like C 3 here. For the composition C 3, what happens is that uh, this is very situation is very very similar to C 1, but instead of obtaining my uh, pro eutectoid alpha phase, I would obtain a pro eutectoid cementite phase. In terms of properties of course, this could be very different, but let us come to that in a moment. So, when I slowly cool in an alloy like C 3, for a temperature regime between a temperature which is marked here, for instance, I mark this T 3 and the T eutectoid, I would obtain the pro eutectoid cementite phase. Now, this is the cementite gamma plus cementite phase field and therefore, I would obtain a gamma plus cementite and therefore, I would obtain F E 3 C coming out and like before, this F E 3 C comes out along the prior austenite grain boundary. So, this can be seen here, this is now my Fe 3 C coming out at the prior austenite grain boundaries. Now, when I cross my eutectoid temperature, the remaining mixture of course, from the fact that there is very little of the pro eutectoid phase in the micrograph shown here, it is clear that the C 3 composition chosen for this particular here for this C 3 is very very close, it is tending towards my eutectoid composition C eutectoid. So, that is very clear, but in general of course, I would obtain a pro eutectoid cementite followed by the eutectoid reaction. That means, in the remaining microstructure, I would actually obtain my eutectoid transformation, which is my perlite, which is here. So, all this is perlite, though it is not very well resolved in this micrographs, but we can see that in the next micrograph, where I have a zoomed in version, where I have my pro eutectoid cementite along the prior austenite green boundaries. And then of course, I have an eutectoid mixture consisting of alpha and Fe 3 C in the remaining part. 
So, this is my perlite coming out. So, this is an SEM micrograph of an hyperutartite composition which is close to about 1 percent carbon. So, for a composition like C 3 what happens is that I have of course, precipitation below T 3 of the proeutectoid phase. The composition of the gamma move will move along this line towards eutectoid <coughs> composition C eutectoid and finally, of course, uh, at my eutectoid temperature I would have the eutectoid transformation giving rise to a perlitic microstructure. So, let us have a zoomed in view of this micro constituent called perlite and of course, this is we have already seen is for 1 percent carbon steel or close to 1 percent carbon steel. The above micrograph is the one we considered with 0.8 percent mark uh, carbon which means that I have a complete eutectoid transformation and there is no pro eutectoid phase. And this also highlights the point which I mentioned that the lamellar spacing here seems to be very large. In this case I am cutting my lamella at a very uh, steep angle and here the lamellar spacing is small that means I am cutting my lamella almost perpendicular to the lamellar construction. So, these are some typical micrographs obtained for steels consisting of carbon percentage around the eutectoid carbon percentage of 0.8 percent carbon. Now, uh, these are again pictures of the perlitic structure, but now seen in what we call an atomic force microscope and this is the surface morphology which is revealed and this is of course, not plain carbon steel this is other elements like silicon manganese and other of course, trace elements phosphorus and sulfur and this particular alloy has been hot rolled at 700 degrees followed by slow cooling and this gives rise to a hardness of the range of about 180 bhn, but the important point to note is now I can clearly see in three dimensions or a three dimension looking image of these lamellar structure of perlite. So, you can see that I have in an AFM which is now the AFM gives a surface topography uh, at a very high resolution and therefore, I can see in all these picture this lamellar morphology it is clear and from this of course, I can measure my lamellar spacing and this lamellar spacing can further be correlated with the cooling rate. So, this is a nice uh, AFM picture the previous pictures were all taking in a scanning electron microscope and this is an atomic force microscope which is giving me the lamellar morphology of perlite. So, let us make a few checks before we go further we have already seen that components need not be only elements they can be compounds like alumina and chromia phase diagrams do not correspond to global energy minimum and often microstructures are tolerated in phase diagrams therefore, phase diagrams give information on stable phases expected for a given set of thermodynamic parameters like temperature pressure and for a given composition. Phase diagrams do not contain microstructural information, but we overlay that and in especially in the form of slow cooling curves that is the microstructures obtained on slow cooling. Metastable phases like cementite are included in phase diagram and this extends the practical utility of phase diagrams and further I pointed out that whenever we overlay cooling curves we assume that the cooling rate is small. Now, further let us solve one more example before we go on to the next chapter the chapter on phase transformations and in this case we consist again take an alloy of steel and I consider two situations and that means, I have two separate alloys and I am slowly cooling these alloys from the gamma phase field. One alloy is an hyper eutectoid alloy that means, it is carbon more than 0.8 percent another alloy is an hypo eutectoid alloy which is a carbon percentage lower than 0.8 percent. So, this is an hypo eutectoid alloy and there is an hyper eutectoid alloy and I am trying to compare the microstructures obtained for these two cases and for as an uh, exercise I assume that the pro eutectoid phase uh, which forms and this obviously we have noted forms along the gamma grain boundaries we assume that its phase fraction is 6 percent. In one case of course, and this is what I mean by the pro eutectoid phase which is present along the gamma grain bound prior gamma grain boundaries. So, this yellow phase fraction is I assume is about 6 percent. Now, in one case of course, the 6 percent would consist of the pro eutectoid alpha for the composition to the left of the eutectoid composition for in this case I would obtain 
here during, of course, the during this range of solidification I would get an pro eutectoid alpha and in the other case I would obtain a pro eutectoid cementite. And I assume for now that the phase fraction is 6 percent. What I would like to know is that what is the carbon content of these two alloys given this fact that the micro structure of course, looks similar, but of course, the actual phase present along the grain boundaries is different. So, case 1 I am given that 6 percent of ferrite is present along the gamma grain boundaries, case 2 6 percent of cementite is present along the gamma grain boundaries. And I know my eutectoid reaction occurs at 723 degrees Celsius and I know uh, the product alpha produced has 0 0.025 percent of carbon. So, referring to the ion carbon phase diagram for case 1 0 0.06 which is now my the fraction of the um, pro eutectoid phase is 0 0.8 minus C 1, C 1 being the composition which I am trying to find out for this case. So, this is my C 1 and this is the case of a C 2 and of course, this composition is C eutectic. So, 0 0.8 minus C 1 is divided by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.025. This is assuming that now, now I am putting my fulcrum of my lever here and this is the length of my lever. One end of the lever there is the alpha phase, one end of the lever is the eutectoid composition. So, this is my 0 0.025 at one end here for the lever, the other end of the lever is at the eutectic compo eutectoid composition 0 0.8 percent. And since the fraction of the pro eutectoid phase is proportional to 0 0.8 minus C 1 here, this this are small arm of the lever and therefore, from this I can calculate my C 1 to be 0 0.75 percent carbon. Therefore, I can mark this carbon percentage. So, I can now mark my carbon concentrations here and this is now my 0 0.7 percent 5 percent. And now, in case 2 similarly I can construct a lever. Now, the lever extends from 0 0.8 percent carbon here to all the way up to the cementite composition here and the fulcrum of this lever is going to be here. So, one end is at 0 0.8 percent carbon and the other end, other end is at cementite uh, composition which is 6.67 percent carbon. Again I can write down my lever rule as 0 0.06 which is the pro eutectoid phase composition is C 2 minus 0 0.8 divided by 6.67 minus 0 0.8 which gives me C 2 is equal to 1.15 percent carbon. Therefore, now my carbon percentage here is 1.15 percentage of carbon. Therefore, looking at this is another example where looking at my microstructure, <coughs> I can actually calculate the area fractions. I can of course, convert my area fractions into volume fractions uh, typically assuming that the area fraction is equal to the volume fractions and from the volume fractions I can using the density of these phases, I can calculate the weight fractions and using the weight fractions and the lever rule, I shall be able to calculate the composition of in some case of course, if I do not know the overall composition, I can calculate the overall composition. Of course, if I know the overall composition, I would like to know um, uh, the phase fractions in equilibria, I can do that using the lever rule and the tie line construction. So, with that we come to this end of a not an extended chapter, but a brief chapter on phase diagrams and as I pointed out there are other technologically important phase diagram, there, there are other phase diagrams involving other kind of reactions like the monotectic and the syntactic reactions. But, um, we will not consider them here. Instead, we move on to a chapter on phase transformations, wherein we will consider uh, typically that how this phase transformations which we have been talking about say for instance, the gamma phase giving the alpha plus Fe 3 C or the um, liquid plus alpha giving the beta phase, how do these phase transformation take place we will consider in detail.